So you're in the market for running shoes and let's just say you're brand agnostic. Like you're not someone who's gonna be like checks over stripes all the time. And you wanna know exactly what's the tech inside these shoes that make them different. So you as a knowledgeable consumer understand why you would pick one over the other. Just beyond the subjective and biased reviews that you generally see out there in runners magazines or on YouTube. And the way I'm gonna achieve this objectivity is digging into the patented technology of each one. For example, like the energy rods within the Adidas shoe, which I have done a dedicated video, but this is gonna be a broader overview. Now I'm only gonna go over the top five super shoes in terms of revenue and market share percentage. So if you like this video and at the end, you wanna see more of the next five, hit that like button, subscribe, comment below and let me know you want to see the next five and I can help break it down and even share this wonderful matrix that I put together differentiating each piece. So in this video, we're going to talk about the Vaporfly, the Alpha Fly, the Rocket X, the Adios Pros and the Saucony Endorphin Elites. So let's get into it. Category one is going to be the carbon plate and I can kind of tag team two of these just right off the bat because the top two shoes in terms of market share and revenue are Nike's. Number one with a 40% market share is the Vaporfly and coming in right behind is the Alpha Fly. And the patented technology of the carbon plate, it, it kind of is shaped like a spoon. Now digging in the patent, what it's saying is you can't just put a flat carbon plate. Like a lot of predecessors and early on shoes that utilize carbon plates, simply flat, built it into the foam and it's going to give you that rigidity and that extra energy pushing forward. But what Nike is saying is that it needs to be more of a curved plate at the front in the forefoot to help you with that spring off and to actually let your front part of your foot engage and propel you forward. So that's exactly what Nike is saying that is going to be different in these other shoes. Now in differentiating the carbon plate and Hoka's super shoes, they're saying there's not enough attention paid to each phase of the step. And one thing important to note with Hoka's metal rocker geometry that we'll go into much later on in their patented technology is that they're very favorable to people that land more rear foot and heel strike. And it makes you just rock forward. So in keeping with that sense of design and understanding of how people run, that's what is related in their carbon plated technology where it is meant that each phase has a different feel of the carbon plate. So you see various curvatures and they've patented and shown in illustrations, different variations of their carbon plate just to adhere to different styles of running. And then as they go and design further shoes, they can see what works best for each variation of shoe. Up next, the Saucony Endorphin Elite. And what they're saying is, pretty similar to what Nike's patent has said, as far as there needs to be some sort of curvature in the forefoot. But what's different is that they're saying there's too much padding underneath of the carbon plate to get the full effect. You really want that rigidity. You really want to spring forward. And if you got too much padding under there, then it's going to absorb too much of the forces of the carbon plate and it's going to be really diminishing returns. So what they've done is stated that you need minimal cushioning. And that's what you're going to see in the Saucony Endorphin Elite is that that carbon plate is going to be much closer to the road than the other super shoes on the market. And that's how they've differentiated themselves. Now, last but not least is the most unique out of all of them because everyone's using carbon plates, but that's not what the Adidas Adios Pro does. What they're using is energy rods and they've got these individual rods that spring out and mimic each of the metatarsals. And what Adidas is theorizing is that a carbon plate is too rigid. And then if you put too much pressure on one side of the foot versus the other, then it's gonna favor that side with the carbon plate when actually, if you wanna get the full effect of the carbon technology, you need individual rods so each metatarsal can be complemented by each pressure of the individual rods. And that rounds out all the carbon plated technology. Up next is the sole construction. Now we're talking about the actual design of it, not necessarily the foam composite that we'll get to in the next category, but there's only two shoes that really distinguish themselves from the other ones within the group. And that's the Nike Alpha Fly and the Rocket X. For the purpose of this video, I have the Mach 5, which has the same meta rocker geometry, but let's get into exactly what that is. Now, the Nike Alpha Fly very much distinguishes itself from its sister over here, the Vaporfly, with these energy pods and what Nike is saying within their patent is that these energy pods are needed because just the foam composite material at the bottom isn't enough feedback 
and over time it breaks down and you're just not getting enough propulsion forward. So with the addition of these energy pods, it gives you that little extra oomph. And this is the weapon of choice for world renowned and breaking two project star Eliud Kipchoge. And this is the shoe that he used to break the two hour marathon barrier. So if it works for him, then the technology must be doing something. So up next is Hoka's Meta Rocker Geometry. This is kind of what they've built their company on. And a lot of, of the shoes are based on this philosophy and it's just different variations of sole thickness throughout the shoe from the heel to the forefoot. And it's just based on a lot of their knowledge of how the foot moves, what kind of terrain you're gonna be running on and just how they've built the most cushioned sole construction in the markets. So it's obvious I'm wearing something different in this section of the video. And the reason for that is because in the editing process, I was not 100% satisfied with the foam composite analysis that I performed because there's just not a lot of information out there and definitely not patented technology because a lot of companies want to keep this a trade secret, meaning that instead of disclosing publicly the composition of their foams, like if it's 20% this, 30% this material, and this is how you you know make it in the background, then after 20 years, then they're going to lose that market advantage. Whereas if you keep it a trade secret, secret you don't publicly disclose anything so because of that i had a lot of trouble with this section of the video so i did continued analysis and research and i found a brilliant article and i tried to, my best to validate a lot of the information on runrepeat.com i'm going to put that link in the description and it's going to go really in depth on what you feel when you're wearing each kind of shoe and the big takeaway that I got from it is that companies are really using two different types of foam composites. One's going to be this PBA or PBAX or this thermoplastic polyester. The only one that's using the TPEE is the Adidas shoe. And the most important takeaway from that is they're the most durable. So a lot of these super shoes just don't last long in exchange for going faster and being a lighter weight shoe. They are risking the durability. And Adidas went the route of this TPEE, which apparently is being shown to, again, be the most durable. So what I will flash across the screen is kind of what the magic is for each of the shoe. And then on a scale of responsiveness, cushiness and firmness. So you can at least see that. And again, if you want more detail, please check out the link in the description to that article because it does go incredibly in depth, not just in the shoes that I'm talking about in this video, but also the whole world of foam composites of all running shoes. Now, lastly, let's talk about the uppers in these shoes. And really there's only two big players. It's going to be Nike with their fly knit technology, and it's going to be Adidas with their prime knit technology. And although even like the Saucony Endorphin Elite looks pretty unique, there just isn't this kind of unique technology that there is in these shoes. And if you heard the name fly knit, prime knit, you're probably thinking who came first and really Nike did, but Adidas did say that they also were researching for a decade to find something breathable, something durable, and something lightweight. They did sue each other. Nike sued over the technology. There's like 300 patents protecting this fly knit technology. And then Adidas countersued for some other reasons and they settled out of court, they called a truce, and just know that they're very similar. That's why Nike sued Adidas. And the reason being is that both were looking for a way to find something breathable, something lightweight without sacrificing the durability. Now, the biggest difference is, is that with the Flyknit technology in the Nike, you are going to see just a seamless design and construction because it's supposed to be one single piece of yarn that is literally knitted to make this construction. Whereas there are similar knitting on the prime knit, but it's made up of multiple pieces and which one's better you know, that's going to be entirely up to you. They both achieved some great things and just overall, just great feel. Like there's definitely something different, especially with the fly knit feels more like a sock and even coming in a close second, not as comfortable. That's my completely subjective and biased opinion, but very much comfortable and very much breathable. And again, not as breathable as the fly knit in that. So that rounds up the four main categories that I was looking for. Again, if you want to see the next five shoes that I have listed here, then let me know in the comments, like subscribe, and that'll allow me to do even more research because this took quite a bit. So